worthy. He's worthy. You know, we, we've got a, a, a good-looking congregation in here today. Look over at that person beside you and say, you know, you cleaned up pretty good. You're, you're looking all right. Hey, man, we, we've got a good, but there, there's somebody uh, that, that I'm looking for today. I, I know I, I've, I've seen the, the musicians and the singers and the ushers and the sound techs in the back and, and the hospitality team out in the lobby and, and the nursery workers and all of that and some of the babies this morning. Seen a lot of folk, but there's somebody that I'm looking for, amen, somebody that is, is imperative that we find him, amen. So I want to preach this morning for a little while on this thought. Has anybody seen Shamgar? Has anybody seen Shamgar? Anybody ever heard of Shamgar? Some of y'all have, some of you haven't. Amen. Well, I'm looking for it. Well, maybe not him since he lived about 3,000 years ago. Be a little bit hard to find him or any of his DNA right now. But I'm looking for somebody that can live in the spirit of Shamgar. You know, folks have spirits. (laughs) Uh, Hello, somebody. I said, we have spirits. We have a a nature, okay? Some folks just grouchy, got a grouchy spirit. Some got a happy spirit. Some, Some got an ugly spirit, a mean spirit. Some got a sweet spirit. Spirit. Some got all of them. I mean, they're just poured right in there just according to what day of the week or what hour of the day that it is. Amen. But there is a, a missing element in the church today. Amen. And it is personified through the life of this young man by the name of Shamgar. Amen. Now, now let's read about Shamgar. And I can tell you, the Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about Shamgar. As a matter of fact, there's only one verse in the Bible dedicated to this guy by the name of Shamgar. But what a verse it is. What a power-packed verse. I mean, his, his, his tenure in Scripture, uh, as he, he appears like a flash, like a shooting star, makes his statement, makes his mark upon Bible history, and then he fades away. But he leaves us with a spiritual challenge for this hour in which we live. Folks, I don't know if you realize it or not, but we're living in perilous times. We are living in desperate times. We are living in evil and wicked times. But I'm glad to report to you this morning that where sin doth abound, the grace of God doth much more abound. Hallelujah. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how evil it gets. There is still the grace of God flowing from a never-ending fountain and it will never run dry and the devil will never be able to conquer the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. I'm on a side that cannot lose this morning. Do you hear what I'm saying? I am a winner today, but only if I fight. We need fighters today. Let's read about Shamgar. Verse 31 of chapter 3 of the book of Judges. This is the only time we read about this guy named Shamgar. Shamgar was the third judge of the nation of Israel. Amen. And it said, after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goad. And he also delivered Israel. Amen. He slew 600 men. What an unlikely hero with an unlikely weapon. Amen. He didn't have a machine gun. He didn't have an AR. He didn't even have a 22 pistol. But he had a stick that was about 8 or 10 feet long, had a sharp end on the end of it, and that's what he killed 600 Philistines with. Now, you've got to understand the, the, the time that Israel is living in. They are 
are living in much like us today, an oppressing time. They were oppressed by an enemy called the Philistines and the Philistines ruled them with a rod of iron and they made the, 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 the Hebrews grow the weed and the crops and when it got time to harvest the crops then the Philistines would sweep in and they would get all of the, the weed and all of the food after the, after the Hebrews had worked so hard to harvest it. Amen. They lived. They, they did not have any weapons of war. They did not have spears. They didn't have swords. The Philistines made slaves out of them and, and almost literally and they would not even let a blacksmith live in the land of Israel because they were afraid he might take a plow shear and put it in, make it into a sword. And so they kept them under a thumb. They kept them in oppression and the morale of the children of Israel was very low and broken. Brother, I look around and survey the church world today and I see a lot of similarities between the church today and the people of Israel 3,000 years ago that we have allowed an enemy called the world, the flesh and the devil to come in and make servants out of us and put us under their thumb. Amen. And take away our precious resources. That wheat represents the staff of life and they come in and they're taking away the life and I see what's happening in the church world today and I see an enemy that is taking life out of that church. Amen. Somebody's got to stand up. Somebody's got to possess the spirit of Shamgar and say, you know what? I'm tired of being a pushover for the devil. I'm tired of the devil robbing me of the blessings of God and the goodness of God. I think I'm going to do something about it. Listen, their morale was broke. They were hopelessly defeated. They didn't have a John Wayne to go charging to their rescue. They didn't have some great generals or military men. They were broken as a nation. They had lost their faith in God. You know, many times when God sends deliverance, it comes from the most unlikeliest of places. God uses the most unlikeliest of things and people to work his will. Think about Moses' rod, David's sling, the most unlikeliest thing to bring down the greatest empires of the day. When God got ready to deliver Israel, amen, he did not find a man of royal position. He did not find a man of military rank. But I tell you what he found. He found an old country boy by the name of Shamgar. He found an old country hick, if you will, a hayseed brother, a man that had probably never been in a town in his life, but he had spent his life growing up behind a yoke of oxen and plowing oxen and working hard in the field. A man, that old country boy, that he knew what it was to labor under the hot sun from daylight to dark. He knew what it was to plant that crop. His greatest achievement was breaking and driving a yoke of oxen. He was never voted most likely to succeed in the military. He never joined the National Guard. Don't know if they'd have had him or not. Amen. He didn't have a lot of qualifications just like a lot of us today. Listen, it doesn't matter to God what you can do. God's not impressed with resumes. God's not impressed with degrees. You know what God's impressed with? The heart. The heart. Amen. Somebody that's got a heart. Somebody that's, that has a passion and a burden. See, he reached down. He looked all over the land of Israel. And he said, you, you know, he, he said, these people have been in bondage for a long time. But they are content to live that way. Can I tell you that as long as me and you are content to live as we're living, God will allow us to stay that way as long as we are content and happy to be a doormat for the 
devil as long as we are happy to let the devil run roughshod over our family and through our marriage and over our children as long as we are content to let the devil abuse us and misuse us God is going to let that happen but thank God there was a guy that woke up one day that was possessed of a noble discontent by the name of Shamgar maybe many folk didn't know it but by the time the sun went down that afternoon everybody's talking about Shamgar why because he was discontent in his soul oh great God give us people today in the church that get stirred up in their soul you know what to bring revival let the church get stirred up let the heart get stirred up you remember growing up when your mama'd get stirred up? She kept telling you one more time, boy. Your daddy'd say one more time. Your daddy ever tell you you're skating on thin ice? And me being fat, I knew if I broke through, it's gonna be bad. You're skating on thin ice, son. You're gonna get in trouble. But you kept pushing and pushing. Come on. Finally, mama'd had enough. Y'all ever seen mama have enough? It's not pretty. I said it's not pretty. She can go from sweet and calm and, and loving to a raging, bulging eyed lunatic. Whipping and slapping and jerking anything and everything she can get her hands on. She'll whoop daddy if he gets within reach of her. Come on, somebody. Amen. Why? Because I'm telling you, she had reached a point where she's had enough. Brother, I believe the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in America is going to be pushed to the point that we're either going to continue to roll over and play dead for the devil or somewhere, somehow, there's got to be the spirit of Shamgar rising up within us and say you know what I've had enough I've had enough of this mess I've had enough of the devil just like them old frat boys from the Carolinas and the folks from uh, Oxford and LSU they said them bunch of terrorist ragheads we've had enough of this mess and you shouting death to America we're going to hold up the flag and we're going to sing on oh, America the beautiful brother they got pushed to a point there's a pushing going going on and God is asking that church how much longer are you going to let the devil push you how much longer are you going to let hell shove you how much longer are you going to let the devil walk on you somebody's got to get possessed of a noble discontent and say I'm rising up this is not how I was supposed to live this is not my destiny no schooling no training, no military experience, but he had heart. I said he had heart. He had a spirit that got stirred. One day it dawned on him. I'm telling you, if it ever dawns on us, if reality ever hits us, this nation will change. We're taking a lot of things for granted. The church world's taking a lot of things for granted. But we're coming to a culmination point, an inflection point. We're coming to the boiling point. And if it ever gets to the place that we think about where we are and what's going on and the people stand up and the spiritual men and women, that remnant stand up and say, you know what? It just dawned on me the heritage that I have and the history that I have. I was born in the fire. I'm part of something greater than I am. I'm part of something that's gonna live on after I'm gone. There's been men and women that's paid a price so that you and I could sit here and worship God in the liberty of the Holy Ghost and feel the power and the glory of God and dedicate little babies and celebrate seniors and get ready to go on for the next generation. Somebody's gotta realize we've got too much heritage to let it go to waste. We've gotta rise up and defend what God has given the church church who's going to rise up would it be a Josiah that God picks when he not even out of kindergarten or would it be a young man like Timothy would it be a young woman 
young lady like Esther? Will it be somebody, oh God, that's unknown and unheard, but they get stirred. That's what we need is a stirring. God talks about when the eagle stirs her nest. If she don't stir that nest, those baby eagles going to stay in that nest till they get on social security. But you know what mama eagle does? When it gets time, getting close to the time, she starts pulling out all that rabbit fur and all that sheepskin and everything that she's built that nest with and she starts pulling it out layer by layer and every day it gets down a little closer to the sharp sticks and, the, and, and all that that she's built the foundation of that nest with and it gets uncomfortable. See, that's really the only way we're gonna move is when it gets uncomfortable. Hey, man, when COVID hit, when 9-11 hit we got uncomfortable and we got stirred up a little bit but we're falling right back now and the devil's having a heyday in the house of God and people are losing out with God brother I'm telling you it's time for God's people to arise has anybody seen a Shamgar somebody that'll stand up and say hey I realize where I'm at I realize the baton that's been passed to me and I want to make sure that there's something worth passing to the next generation. I want to see my grand boys filled with the Holy Ghost around these altars. I want to see other kids baptized in the Holy Ghost and kids crusade. I want to see God move in the youth and send revival in every area. But somebody's got to get stirred up. If we got half as stirred over spiritual stuff as we do sports. Come on. If we got stirred up half as much over the things of God. Some of you know Alabama's record better than you know God's record. Hello? You know everything about your team, your hero, your movie star. You know more about the Kardashians than you do Lamentations. Great God, have mercy. Wasting your time, insulting your intelligence, following them idiots watching so-called reality show. You know why stuff like that's on TV? Because dummies like dummies watch it. I'd rather watch a shark eating a fish. That's real, man. Come on. I got news for y'all. That ain't real. None of that's real. It's all scripted. Even swamp people. That ain't real. It's all scripted. Hello? Hello? I wish I was preaching to real people. They play us. They play us. Just like the devil plays us. Amen. Shamgar was tired of being played. He said, you know what? I'm a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm a descendant of that God that called my great, 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 great granddaddy out of the land of Haran and out of all of them ungodly places and pagan worship. I'm a descendant of those folks that came up out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand that humbled the greatest empire. I'm a descendant of those that walked across the Red Sea, of those that went on and crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. I'm a descendant of those that walked under the pillar of fire and the pillar of the cloud by day and night. I'm a descendant of those that ate meat and bread from an angel's table turned over in the wilderness and here I am begging bread from the enemy of God. I'm living below my privilege. I'm living below my calling. I'm living below what God has for me. Folks, somebody's got to say, you know what? I'm tired of living on crumbs. I'm ready to move up to the table. I'm tired of living on leftovers. I'm ready to rise up and assume my place in the kingdom of God. God's looking for somebody that's got a little spirit. A little spizzerinctum. Say, what is that? I don't know, but I'll know it when I see it. Some of y'all been sitting in here all morning. You ain't laughed. You ain't clapped. You ain't sung. You ain't done nothing. We could have brought a naughty cucumber and set up where you are. About get as much out of it because you ain't giving nothing either. I know what's wrong. Some folks done pickled. (laughs) 
You know what a pickle is? It's a cucumber gone bad. <laughs> Woo, glory. Won't do nothing. We lost our spirit. Are you excited about church? Was you excited to come here this morning? Did you pray yesterday and say, oh God, meet with us in the house of God? Did you get up this morning and on your way say, God, I want to see you in the house. I want to feel God. I want to hear from heaven. Or are we content just to live broke down, bent down at the mercy of the world and the devil? Listen to me, I'm a child of God. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. My name's written down in the Lamb's book of life. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence it's a speaking in other tongues. The world thinks I'm crazy, but God knows me by name. Amen. And I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. I've wallowed in the mud, but I've done it all through the blood. Hallelujah. I'm still with God, and God is with me. I've got too much to quit now, too much in store, too much ahead. We've got to keep going. We've got to get excited again. You know when the world's gonna get saved when the church gets excited about what we got. I mean, if Christianity was a product that we sold and we were salesmen, we wouldn't be near as healthy as we are because we'd be starving to death trying to sell it the way most of us act about it. Hmm. I see you didn't get that, but anyway. You know what a successful salesman? He's somebody who believes in his product. She's somebody that, that has that product in her heart, knows everything about it. Did you ever go to look at a car not intending to buy a car and you drove away with seven years worth of payments? And on your way home, you're thinking, dear God, what happened? I was just looking. I wasn't even going to buy. But here I am. It's like when I bought that tractor. I told my wife, I said, I'm going to look at tractors. I called her that evening. I said, well, she said, what? Did you look at them? I said, yep. Did you find one you like? Oh, yeah. I made the mistake of climbing up in the seat, putting that key in and turning her and cranking her up. And then the guy just hooked me like a starving catfish. He said, drive it around. Whew. See, they tell you if you touch something that you want to buy, if you touch it, 75% increased chance you're going to buy it. Boy, I bought it. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Amen, look. Amen, you didn't intend, but it just happened. Listen, we gotta get excited about Jesus in the church. We've gotta get excited about worship. There was a time when folks worked 10, 12, 14 hours a day, come on to church. They had revivals that went six weeks, six months, and kept on going. Amen, everybody was there. Folks was getting saved, having a throw down. Amen, having an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. But now everybody's just kind of loaded down and just say, well, if I make it today, if I can make it one more step, great God, I don't want to go limping through the gates. I want to walk through singing victory in Jesus. I want to run through singing amazing grace. How sweet the sound. I want to go through singing onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. Let that church get stirred up with a noble discontent and she'll get tired of living defeated. She'll get tired of living discouraged and Something will change. <clears throat> you can't change for anybody but yourself. Come on. Not real change, not lasting change. It's got to happen in here. Something clicked in Shamgar. One verse, 600 men. I would have loved to have seen that. Wouldn't that be a YouTube video? Wow. One old farm boy, probably like Jethro Bodine, with a spear. And he's just a fighting and a fighting and a fighting. And everybody's dying. I mean, he's shish kebabbing the enemy. <laughs> shoop, shoop. 
I'm telling you, he's fighting and God is working. Amen. Why? Because faith rose up in his heart. When he got stirred up, when he got tired of being sick and tired, when he got tired of being a slave, when he got, listen, have you ever planted a garden? Have you ever worked hard? Amen. And, and, and started that stuff up and watched it grow. And then how would you like it if you'd have planted a garden of tomatoes and okra and squash and cucumbers and all of that stuff and you planted it and you worked it and you sweat and you watered it and you put the time, the effort and the money into it and you babied it and then all of a sudden the next day somebody come driving up in your yard marched out there and got every bit of it and just stole it from you. There goes all of your labor. There goes all of your investment. There goes all of your sweat equity. It's gone. Somebody that did not put anything into it is getting everything out of it. Well I'm telling you the same thing happened and spiritually we work and we pray and we invest and we go and we do but somewhere before we bring it to the final harvest we allow the enemy to sweep in and carry it all away and we're just sitting there saying oh well no 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 it's not oh well devil you can't have my tomatoes you can't have my cucumbers Naboth said you can't have my vineyard I don't care how bad you want it what I've got is not for sale and I'll die to keep it. I'll die to keep the anointing. I'll die to keep the spirit of God. I'm not going to surrender. I'm not going to surrender. He said, it's not our lot. We're the Hebrews. We're the ones that's crossed over. We've been called out by God. We're different than any other people on the earth, he said. We may be fewer, but we're mightier. We've got a heritage, he said. I'm not going to dishonor those from the past. Those that's part of that great cloud of witnesses that's cheering us on. Sometimes they might look at us and say, what are you doing? Don't roll over and play dead. Don't give in to the devil. Don't give up. Endure hardness as a good soldier of the cross. Get stirred up. You know what happened to Shamgar? He got sick and tired of being sick and tired. He got tired of being a patsy. If your name's Patsy, I apologize. But he got tired of being a patsy for the devil. He got tired of being a pushover for the devil. And he said, you know what? The blood that's flowing in my veins is not the blood of slavery. It's not the blood of a peon. It's not the blood of the scum of the earth. We've been called of God. We've got eternal promises. We've got to eat. Isn't that where we are, church? Haven't we been called of God? Aren't we a peculiar people? Aren't we having that we've been called out of darkness into light? Aren't we a peculiar priesthood? Amen. Don't we belong to God? We've got something better to live for than this world. My life is more than what's happening in this world. My life is to be lived on a higher plane. It's to be lived on a higher level. I'm to serve God and let God manifest himself through me. Shamgar, it said... He killed 600 men with an ox goad. It's the only time you'll find the word ox goad in your Bible. Only time. You know what God's saying? Doesn't matter if you can't sing. Doesn't matter if you can't play. Doesn't matter if you can't teach. Doesn't matter if you don't have this talent or this ability. God said, I can use you regardless of what you don't have. He didn't look for the most educated. Paul said, it's not the ones that's at the top. God's looking for them that's at the bottom of a humble and a contrite spirit. Those that realize my help cometh from the Lord. Amen. Shamgar got stirred up in his heart. Then he put something in his hands and he went to warfare. See, it's got to start in here. It's got to start in here. Mama, when's the last time you got some holy anger at the devil for what he's trying to do to your family? Daddy, when's the last time you got mad at the devil? Amen. And let it transfer from your heart to your hands and you march in and serve notice on hell. My family's not going to be 
a pushover anymore. We're going to stand up for God. If I got to make everybody mad, hair, lip, granny in the process, I'm still going to do it and be what God's called us to be. If we got a clean house, we'll clean house. If we got to get rid of phones and computers and iPads, we'll get rid of what we got to get rid of. But we've got to defeat the Philistines. We've got to defeat the enemy if we're going to live in victory. Some of our families are more like war zones than homes. You're fighting and fussing, raging against one another. Children out of control. Bunch of smart mouth, disrespectful, or to have the mucus drainage slapped out of them. You know what they're doing? They're parenting, parroting the behavior that's coming from mom and daddy. You need to get order in your family. Single mamas, single daddies, you need to get order. You need to get order in that home, sir. Amen. You a man or a mouse? Are you Superman or Mickey? Which one are you? Who are you going to be? Wonder Woman wants Superman by her side. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, don't you ladies? Don't you want a good godly man full of the Holy Ghost with a backbone, some vim, vigor, and vitality that'll stand beside you? That'll help fight the good fight? Get your head out of that television. Get off social media. You know why families are cracking up? Because mom and daddy ain't cracking down. The kids are running the house, telling them what they're going to do, what they're not going to do. I'm talking about the whole land is under the heel of the Philistines. He said judgment must begin at the house of God. You got to take stock. We have to take stock of our relationship. Young people, you got to take stock of your life. How you living? Are you being a hypocrite? Are you playing around with the world? You're flirting with God, flirting with the world, being a good little Christian on Sunday and living like hell Monday through Saturday? Are you living a life, walking right? Does our life back up what we say? We wonder why the Philistines have power over us. We wonder why we can't shout in victory. Why we can't lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Why we can't see the miracles of God happen anymore. Amen. Why? Because there's not any shamgars in the land. Everybody's just going along to get along. Let's don't stir up the devil. I'm telling you, that mentality is just about wrecked the church. The world has got so a, a foothold within the church and things are happening that we've about lost all of our power. But thank God there's still a remnant left within the house of God. There's still people left that believe in the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. There's still people left that can get stirred up with a righteous indignation and say like Shamgar, you know what? I'm not going to take it anymore. I was created for more than this. God's got greater things than this for me, my marriage, and my life. You don't have to sit back and let the devil ruin what you have. Fight. Fight. Look at your neighbor and tell him, fight. Come on, fight, not against each other. <laughs> Let's fight the devil. You got to go to war. How'd I do that? On your word, in the word, and on your knees. In that prayer closet. Come on. Ah, Lord, I wish I had that clip of that little old black lady on that movie where she's a praying in there. I don't even remember the name of it, but I remember her. And she gets a praying and shout. She does better act than a lot of folks do in real life. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, that's a woman knows how to pray right there. They can't no actor do that. Hey, man, say, what you talking about, preacher? I don't know. I'm just seeing her in my mind. You know how my mind gets. There's a lot of stuff going on around in here. Hey, Amen. But I'm seeing her. And I'm seeing some of them old timers. Brother, there was folks in that church in years gone by. They never graduated elementary school, much less high school or college. But when they laid hands on the sick, the sick had to go. Amen. The fevers had to go. They walked in the power of the Holy Ghost. They saw lives change. They saw revival. They saw people get up out of wheelchairs. They watched God bless. They got rid of the Philistines. 
They fought them. They fought them. And they overcome them. You're no stronger than what you overcome or what overcomes you. He was tired. Come on, Sister Beth. He was tired of running. He was tired of being a coward. He was tired of excuses. He didn't say we got to build us a gun. He said, I got an ox goat. I got a stick. And he took that stick and he started cracking skulls. Man. You know what happened? Holy Ghost got in that stick. Just like it got in that jawbone that Samson had. Come on. Amen. The Holy Ghost got in that jawbone. And Samson wrought a great victory for the kingdom of God, just like Shamgar. God's given me and you the same opportunity through the Holy Ghost today. We don't have to find the jawbone of a dead donkey. We don't have to find a hickory stick called an ox goat. We don't have to find a slingshot called little David's. No, no. All we've got to do is go into a prayer closet and build the fire of the Holy Ghost and get endued with power from on high and see what God will do with somebody that is stirred up, somebody that's ready. You know what I believe Shamgar said? I'm tired of fighting this, this, this heat. I'm tired of doing all of this work and the enemy stealing the fruits of my labor. He said, great God, if I die, at least let me die fighting. Let me die in the service. Let them know that I was putting up a fight. George Washington said he'd rather die on his feet than live on his knees in servitude. Many years ago, when General Sherman in the Northern Army was cutting that devastating swath through Georgia on their way to the ocean, out in the middle of nowhere, they came upon a little shack. The progress of that entire column was stopped. Sherman rode up in his big white stallion and feathery hat, demanded to know why the progress had stopped, why they were not continuing on in their mission of destruction. One of his lieutenants said, come with me, sir. And he went to the head of the column and standing in the middle of that road was a little lady that history would describe someone that I'd say looked like granny off the hillbillies. And she was standing there with a broom in her hand. Not them like you buy today, but like the, y'all remember grandma's broom that they made? Remember them old brooms that they'd sweep the yard with? Y'all gonna find this weird. But there was a time when folks didn't have grass in their yards. They had a fence around it and it was all dirt. And they didn't want any grass. And they would sweep that dirt. Anybody remember the dirt? I remember my grandma sweeping that dirt when I was little. Amen. And she's standing there with that broom. And old Sherman rode up to her on that big white steed and looked down at her. And he said, Madam, who do you think you are to stop the progress of the Union Army? He said, do you believe that you can defeat this entire column? And she looked at him with a fiery indignation that only a little granny can come up with. And she looked at him and held that broom up and she said, no, sir, I don't believe I can defeat you, but I can show the entire Union Army whose side I'm on. Praise God. Amen. I'm not on your side. You know what? I believe it's time for the church to let the world know and the devil know whose side we on. We need a generation of Joshua's that arise up and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't care what you think, wife. I don't care, husband. We're going on, children. This is the way it's going to be. We're going to live for God and serve God. We're going to plead the blood of Jesus over this home. We're going to plead the blood over our children. We're going to plead the blood over our marriage. We're going to plead the blood over our parenting. We're going to stay in the word. We're going to fight for the glory of God. I'm not looking for other opportunities. He didn't say, let me go get the fellas together. He said, let me fight right where I am. Has anybody seen Shamgar? 
We need him today. We need his spirit, a fighting spirit, a spirit of faith that steps out. Would you step out to fight 600? Whew. I mean, I don't know if I'd step out to fight six, much less 600. Well, I know I wouldn't step out to fight six. No. I got too much hardware in my body. Yeah. I'd have to call Josh. Josh, take care of my heavy work, son. You, she do it. He, that's who you call. Oh, Danielle, forget about Josh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, glory. 600. I don't know if they all started at one time or if they just kept coming. He kept piling them up like cordwood. I don't know. But I know one thing. He didn't stop till he killed 600. 600. And then, Brother Kurt, it said, and he brought deliverance to Israel. He just didn't defeat 600 Philistines. He just didn't have a temporary victory. He just didn't build a temporary fire that blew up and blazed up and then fizzled out. No, no. He went on and brought deliverance to Israel for many, many years. So what I'm saying is if our families are going to have deliverance for this generation, the generations in the nursery and those in the children's church and those of the youth, somebody's got to stand up and not only be able to fight the fight, but enforce the victory and keep the victory going for the next generation generation. Are you going to bring deliverance to your house? Are you going to bring deliverance to your church? Are you going to bring deliverance to your community of faith? What are we going to do? Stand with us all over this house. What are we going to do? Are we going to bring deliverance? It's one thing just to win a battle. That's great. But to me, the most important part is he brought deliverance to Israel he brought deliverance Brother Devin he brought peace he brought security he brought the promise of a brighter future child of God that is what should be in our families today that should be our churches today that though evil men and seducers wax worse and worse, the kingdom of God is triumphing, going forward, step by step, battle by battle, bringing deliverance to the church. I don't believe we have to lose 85% of our graduates every year to that world. I think we can keep them. I think we can keep these young adults I think we can get them saved and full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I loved what, what I believe it was Caleb and Malta, but maybe all of them said that they're praying, praying about what God would have them to do. Don't know what I'm going to do after the, after the military, but I'm just praying and asking God. See, that's the key right there. You're asking God to build that house of the future. You're asking God to lead me and guide me. Why? Because he knows what you're best created for. He knows how he's gifted you and what he's gifted you to do and where you're going to be best suited and so that you're able. See, it's our job, church, to deliver this house from the Philistines so that these young people can go on and apprehend the will of God. Is anybody getting what I'm saying? That we can apprehend the will of God for them, that they can step into it and say, you know what? It was in that service that I heard from the Lord. Elizabeth's down in Lima, Peru right now because on a Sunday night she heard from God right there in that second pew and now then she's a missionary associate in Lima, Peru. Brother, why? Because somebody defeated the Philistines. Somebody brought deliverance and another generation arose to do the work of God. Churches don't have to disintegrate. They don't have to fall apart, split, rupture, and hemorrhage. It's God's will that we be blessed that we grow, we prosper, we fight hell. Come on. We're a band of warriors. We're the greatest band of brotherhood. Those of the household of faith. All it takes is one match to start a fire. One match 
to start a fire and it'll spread. It'll spread. Shamgar's one act of courage, one act of holy, righteous indignation, of noble dispossession, that one act of one old country boy brought deliverance to an entire nation. Who will you deliver when you get stirred up? Who will reap the blessings of your holy discontent? Brother Randy referenced it earlier in the dedication, the spiritual commitment, the spiritual input is beyond value, priceless, great treasure. I am part of who I am today because of those who helped shape my life from 13 years old forward. I am a compilation of all of those inputs. And God used it. If Jesus tarries, only God knows the deliverances that are going to arise. But too many churches are faltering and failing, getting sidetracked by things that does not matter, trying to become entertainment centers instead of houses of worship, trying to appeal to carnal fallen flesh instead of preaching. The only way God's going to accept that flesh is that you crucify it. You bring it to that altar. Shamgar got to the point that he said, you know what? My life's not worth living if I can't live in victory. If I can't live in liberty. If my family cannot enjoy the harvest of their labor. And I'm tired of it. I want to ask you today, are you tired of it? Are you tired of what the devil's doing to your life? Are you tired of the, of the wreckage and the havoc that he's reaping and wreaking? And all of the carnage that's happening? Well, I can tell you, you can put a stop to it. And only you. We can pray for you until we fall out. But it's got to start in here. And when it starts in here, it's going to flow out into movement. And when you reach out, God says, that's what I've been waiting on right there. When God saw old Shamgar and he saw what was rising up in his heart, he said, that's the spark I've been waiting for. Come on, son, I've got the anointing. It's going to flow through that ox goat. And when I get through with you, boy, you're going to be on Fox 10. Hallelujah. Everybody's going to know your name from 3,000 years forward. They're going to know about Shamgar. Why? Because he got tired of being sick and tired. And God anointed what he had and God used it and brought a great victory. Do you want God to use and anoint what you have? Do you want to be anointed? Do you want to be a Shamgar for your family, for your church, for your generation? You got us a song. If you want to be a Shamgar, I invite you to step out and come right now and stand around this altar with your hands lifted towards heaven and say, oh God, I'm tired. Lord, forgive me for allowing the devil to get the upper hand in my life spiritually for allowing the devil to overpower me. God, I'm taking back my life. I'm taking back my spiritual walk. I'm taking back my family, my marriage, my home, my mind. I'm taking it back for the glory of God. I'm tired of living on my knees at the mercy of the devil. I'm going to rise up in the spirit of the Lord and be who God has called me to be.